six seconds. UTEP has no timeouts, but they will have a chance to, at worst, tie the game. Right. Roth and misses this, they have a chance to win the game. There we go, let's watch it. Blocker. UTEP has it, and UTEP has beaten Arizona. A three-pointer. I don't think they called it. No, three let's point. wait. Let's wait. He did not go with the three-point signal. They're saying it's a two-point shot. It's overtime. Two points. Yes, you're right. And it is overtime. The Miners thought they won the game. The scoreboard operator thought they won the game. But it's a two-point basket by Chris Blocker. Back in Tucson, let's watch the hairy final seconds. And when Chris Blocker sets up to take this shot, watch his left foot. His left foot. There it is, clearly on the line. Yeah, good call by the officials. They make the call a two-point. Well, what a shot by Blocker, though, in the clutch to come down. There's a good chance to look at it there. So Don Haskins looked over to us, Ted. He wanted to make sure it was, in fact, a two-pointer, which it was. He just looked again. Yeah. And Dick Paparo saw it from underneath the basket. He came out and coolly made the call. Sure did. Good the official call everybody thought was a three-pointer. Yeah, he controlled the game and said, look, let's get everybody back. I saw it. It was two. So we have overtime at 79. And Tom Tolbert missing the layup attempt for the Wildcats. A ball to UTEP and a foul on Anthony Cook. Well, if you have just joined us, you have missed one outstanding first round game. Arizona led by nine in the early moments. UTEP came back to lead by two at halftime. Led through much of the first part of the second half. We had six ties in the second half. Arizona appeared to be in command in the final two minutes, and despite three starters and four players overall fouling out, UTEP forces overtime. Keith Jackson makes the three-pointer, and of course, Blocker comes back to make the key shot at the end of the at the end of regulation to bring it into overtime. Now Jackson to the free throw. He's played an outstanding game. You can see why he was an All-Conference performer. He loves the clutch, and he's made some big shots down the stretch for the Miners. Three fouls on Anthony Cook, two foul shots for Chief Jackson, and a two-point minor lead. You know, the last time they got the ball inside to Tolbert, Tolbert expected some pressure and didn't get it. The Miners going back to the zone because of foul trouble, but Arizona able to get it inside because that zone is extended all the way out. Tolbert's open again in there. This time he banks it in. So Tolbert ties it at 81, 13 for Tom Tolbert. Blocker. UTEP has had four players foul out of this game, three starters. Chris Sandel, Quentin Gates, and Tim Hardaway, and reserve forward, Wayne Campbell. Stallworth missing a three, and the rebound to Lofton. McMillan was sagging off of Stallworth that time, invited him to take that shot. McMillan wide open in the corner. And the long rebound to Chief Jackson. On the run to Blocker. Blocker. And a long rebound and a foul, and it's going to be on Stallworth. That's his second. Well, UTEP has had to go much further into their bench than Don Haskins would ever want. He has two players out there now who didn't come into this game until the closing minutes of regulation. Well, one thing that happens, Ted, when you've got a lot of new players in, in key situations, sometimes it's very difficult to get cohesion with your team. So all of a sudden, Stallworth shoots a long, ill-advised jumper. Blocker might shoot a long jumper. Instead of getting the ball inside to Richmond, the guy that brought you this far. So I'm sure Don Haskins is going to emphasize to his team, let's go back to the guys that got us here, and let's keep our patience and control. These are the result of new players in the game, where Arizona still has their starters in there. So it should be a tremendous advantage for the Wildcats. Miller makes both. Arizona has now shot 40 free throws in this game. UTEP has shot 19. And the Cats lead by two with 3.35 to play. I think they got to go back to Richmond. He's had a big second half. Has not touched the ball in the last couple of sequences. Here he is. And I'll tell you, he has had one great shooting touch today. Richmond with 16, and we're tied again. 315 in overtime. That extension type zone shows you how much they respect the outside shooting of Arizona. It leaves the middle open, so Cook and Tolbert will get some chances against this kind of defense. Sean Elliott for two. 
26 now for Sean Elliott. Talk about second halves. Elliott had seven at half times, picked up 19 so far in the second half and the overtime. Quinton Gates was the man in the first half for the Miners. He had 20 first half points. He finished with 26, but fouled out, along with his teammate, Chris Sandel. Chief Jackson, he's played a long time with four fouls. Antonio Davis is 34. 24 is Terry Stallworth. Blocker down low. That's a bad shot. He's not going to get that over Anthony Cook. That's his eighth shot block of the game. And a blocker's going to compound his mistake by a foul in the backcourt. So Lofton will get another opportunity to go to the free throw line. Has he had some blocks today? Every time the ball goes up, it seems Cook is knocking it back. Well, that man, of course, now thinks he can do anything after hitting that great shot to force the overtime. But there he tackled a insurmountable hurdle posting up down low against one of the top shot blockers in the West. Here's Elliott at the other end with 2.40 to play in overtime. And UTEP saves the rebound. Stallworth missed free throws. So the thing right now that is burning in Arizona, this game's over in regulation if they make a couple of foul shots. Yeah, they've had a lot of attempts, but they've missed a lot of front ends on one-on-ones. They make their free throws, and this one's already in the bank. Consequently, it gives the Miners a chance to come back. It's got to be Jackson, or they got to go back to Richmond. Richmond's a guy that's made the big hoops. Chief Jackson, another three-pointer. And UTEP has the lead with 2.10 to play. And a steal by Jackson. What a show. I'll tell you something, you cannot give UTEP enough credit. What a show, despite all the foul trouble. And they lead with a minute 55 in overtime. Anthony Cook, on total. A second tip goes in. That was either Tom Tolbert's going to get credit for the tip in. And we have a timeout called by Arizona with 1.48 to play in overtime. UTEP 88, Arizona 87. Jeep Jackson now has seven in the overtime. All right, let's watch Jeep Jackson. Nick McMillan when he turned his head. Is he quick? Jackson's done it all. He's made the big three-point shots, and he's taken over. He realizes the strength of his club is on the bench, and he's the one that's come to the front, and he's made some outstanding plays. Don Haskins' club, unbelievably, has the lead at 88-87. Now they're going to go back, and Arizona's going to pick them up full court because it's Arizona's timeout. But what a job the UTEP has done. This has been an outstanding game. First-round game, can you imagine? The key, the key word, Dan, is unbelievably. Four fouled out players for UTEP. Their other two starters have been playing with four fouls for quite some time. Arizona has only one player with more than three fouls. And yet UTEP has the lead. That's all to their credit. And Jackson's been doing it with four. He's one of the guys that got four fouls. Well, the fans here in Tucson trying to urge on their Wildcats to an NCAA tournament win. But the work is cut out for them. 148 to play in the overtime. UTEP with the ball and the lead. 88 to 87. Jeep Jackson, 21 points in the game, seventh in overtime. Quinton Gates fouled out in regulation with a career high 26 for the Miners. He had 20 in the first half. Elliott has 26 for Arizona. No need for Arizona to make any needless fouls. They still have a, a 45 second possession for UTEP and what they need to do is play good position, hope to get a miss and bring it down. But they don't want to put them to the foul line needlessly. UTEP's gonna run some clock. I'm sure they're not gonna shoot this one until that 45 is down to about 10 and there's 20 on the 45 second clock remaining. So they're just running their motion right now. I'm sure they'll get it in Jeep's hand or get it in Mike Richmond's hand and let one of those two take it over. All right, shot clock to 10. Antonio Davis, the freshman. Stallworth with six. With four, Terry Stallworth. Not the guy I'm sure they wanted to shoot it, but Stallworth makes a big hoop. Arizona down three with 56 seconds left. 35% shooter, Stallworth hits the biggest shot he's ever made as a minor, I'm sure. Tolbert, ah. rimming and out, and UTEP has the ball with 45 seconds left. A foul on Tolbert, and he has fouled out. And now UTEP will go to the line, leading by three. Lute Olsen cannot believe what he has seen in this game. He That's cannot it. believe it. 
I'm sure he'll say after the game if they go on to lose it, which there's still plenty of time they could come back, but they had their chances. They were they had UTEP in foul trouble. They couldn't make the key free throws down the stretch, but give the Miners all the credit because their guard play has been scintillating, and Jeep Jackson with four fouls has just been too much for Arizona, especially in the overtime. So now they've got a golden opportunity, and they get the right man of the foul line. If you're UTEP, Jackson could up this lead to five. There's his story today on the year Jackson shoots 73% from the line. I'd venture to say, Ted, that down the stretch in the last couple of uh, last couple of minutes, Jackson probably shoots about 90 yeah. plus from the line. He's not the kind of guy that looks like he's going to miss very many free throws in the clutch. All right, Lou Elson wanted to make Jackson think about it. He took his 62nd allotment to replace the fouled out player. Joe Turner's in, and here's Jackson. And now they're going to make him think about. Oh, Turner tried to call a timeout, and then he's waved off. Doesn't matter. The senior from Carson, California, Jeep Jackson. Lute Olson, I don't know what happened there. Joe Turner tried to call a timeout, and the McMillan waved him off. Well, what happened was the official gave Jackson the ball. He called the timeout too late. Got to call the timeout before the official gets in the ball. And it looked like he almost stepped into the, into the lane. So had Jackson missed that free throw, he might have got another one. Well, I don't know how these emotionally spent fans are going to do it, but there's two more games here today. Tonight, we should say. Pittsburgh and Marist. And then Oklahoma and Tulsa to wrap up this day in Tucson. I don't imagine there's been many better first-round NCAA games than the one you're looking at right now because both teams have expended all the energy in the world and they played very well. Both schools deserve a lot of credit for this one. All right, we want to take this opportunity to thank some very deserving people. Our NCAA Basketball Committee rep, Cedric Dempsey here in Tucson, Tournament Manager Dick Barch, and Tournament Media Director Butch Henry, all from the University of Arizona. And from Arizona, as well, head basketball coach Lute Olson and the sports information staff of Butch Henry from UTEP Interim Athletic Director Richard Burns, head coach Don Haskins and his staff, and sports information director Eddie Mullins. Transportation arrangements made through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. Well, you turn this around in the regulation, Ted, and it was UTEP down five with about 45 seconds to play. Of course, they were fortunate enough to get some misses at the free throw line from Arizona, and I don't know if this man here is going to return the favor. He doesn't. He makes both. But down five, they need a three-pointer and a timeout immediately. So they need to score right now or this one. They're going to go inside and stay the cook. Now they need to get a timeout. Quick. Well, that's it. Anthony Cook the lay -in, the timeout for Arizona. That used only six seconds, and it's a three-point game. 92-89 UTEP. And I'm sure Don Haskins is going to spend a lot of time in this particular timeout to make sure that Jackson is the one who receives the basketball, and he's the one that controls it, because I'm sure he wants him going to the line, where Lou Dolce is going to say to his club, we can't afford the luxury of waiting. Let's look to get it. Make the foul on the first guy that handles the ball when it comes in. Look to double up, go for a steal. But if you don't get it, don't let him waste a lot of time. All right, now if you're UTEP, the two people you don't want to touch the ball are the freshman Davis and the sophomore Stallworth. I'm sure both off the numbers, neither's a good foul shooter statistically, and the fact that they've never been in this type of situation before. And I'm sure that's what they're mapping out right now at that timeout. They're going to design an inbound play. One thing that always worries you, Ted, is when you're calling out of bounds in this situation, you have to make sure you get the ball back in. It's not as easy as it looks because you know the other team's going to overplay and take a lot of chances. So UTEP may design something where they can send a man long. If the long isn't there, then go ahead and get it in. And you look to go long the first time because Arizona may be so far up on the ball that nobody takes the man going to the basket. And sometimes you can lob over the top and go in for an easy score. All right, UTEP will have to inbound on the baseline and backcourt. The two men, I'm sure they want to touch the ball, are Jackson and Blocker. Arizona brings out same five players, no change. 39 seconds, 92-89 UTEP. I'll tell you one thing, Davis isn't going to touch the ball because he's all the way oh. the other end of the floor. He's not even involved. Richmond to inbound. Just gets it in and the foul. So they got it to Blocker, one of the two players that you would think UTEP wants to have the ball. Foul is on Sean Elliott. That is his fourth foul. Well, Chris Blocker, as you take a look at Lute Olsen in the Arizona bench, Coming off the bench, he shot more free throws than anybody else. So Blocker's a guy I'm sure that Don Haskins wanted to the line, 74% free throw shooter. And what he's saying right now is, please make these free throws as you get these two in. And it's going to be difficult for Arizona to come back. 
Well, they've made every big shot. The Miners just seem like a team that uh, cannot be denied because they seem to make the big one at the end and just come out of nowhere to tie it and bring it into overtime, and they played an outstanding overtime. There's Blocker's story. He has 10 points. Well, it misses a second. It's a four-point game. UTEP the lead. Arizona the ball. Looking for three. And Jackson. No, he, did he touch it? They say no. Now let's see if they overrule. This is good officiating if they do because it was obviously off the UTEP player, but the official closest to the play was screened out. Now they're going to call it. Looked like it was off of UTEP. Well, the three officials conferred. At least they did the right thing there. They conferred. Lute Olsen can't believe it. It happened right in front of him, but the ball comes to UTEP with 30 seconds left. If it didn't go off Jackson, it was an optical illusion because we were right on the angle. Yeah, it, it definitely hit you, but they may have been screened out on that play, and what they probably said was we didn't see it, and the referee closest to the play made the call, and this could be a turnover. Now the clock doesn't even start, and UTEP returns the favor by making a turnover and giving the ball right back to it. It could get the ball in bounds. This is like the old playground days, Danny. Last team with the ball wins, right? Arizona down four. Elliott, his cross court pass stolen by Richmond, and then Richmond is fouled as he races up the floor. So, three consecutive turnovers, and it will wind up with 24 seconds left. UTEP at the line, although Mike Richmond, the man you're looking at, he's only a 61% foul shooter. Lute Olsen very frustrated because his team has not been able to get shots up. Elliott that time tried to penetrate and give it up at the quick hands of UTEP, and they've had their quick hands on so many balls here this afternoon. Comes up with another steal, and Richmond will go to the free throw line. He's played a tremendous game. He's been the guy in the second half that's made the big baskets. Good shooting touch for a left-hander. Falls off of that line, but he's a nice shooter, and he's got about 15 second-half points. 24 seconds, UTEP by five. And by six. But after regulation, nothing's in the bank yet. Lofted, three-pointer. Didn't get there. And down court to Stallworth, and he is fouled by Lofton. With 16 seconds. And now, if Stallworth can hit some foul shots, you might put this one in the bank for Utah. Lofton fouls out of the game with 16 seconds left. The man that Arizona wanted, I'm sure, to get that three-point shot was McMillan. They couldn't get the ball to him. Couldn't get it to McMillan. Lofton shot it a little short, and he made some big free throws in the second half, but not enough free throws for Arizona. They had their chances to put away in the overtime. You gave the Miners a second chance to come out and try to win it, and they took advantage of it because Jeep Jackson took the game over, made some big shots. Very disconsolate Arizona team. Look at that. And the man, the blonde-haired man you saw first with his head down in his hands was Steve Kerr. With Steve Kerr, Arizona may have been able to, there you see Kerr, look at that scar on his right knee. That's what he did in the World Championships last year in Spain. Steve Kerr, an all Pac-10 guard last year, hopes to play again next year. Lute Olsen said we would have won four games that we lost if Steve Kerr had been with us this year. And this has to be an incredibly frustrating moment right now for Arizona. A game they feel they should have won in regulation, and UTEP now leads by seven with 16 seconds left in overtime. And of course, they tried to get the regionals here this year so that they knew Kerr would be, everybody would be ready to go and healthy, and Kerr was injured. So maybe things didn't go right from the start for the, uh, for the Wildcats as they try to get one in and call a timeout, but with only eight seconds left and down five, the Miners in great position to advance and play the Iowa Hawkeyes. UTEP team is going to get themselves a win unless they just go ahead and fold and give the ball right back to Arizona. You don't look for them to do that with only six seconds to play. Well, there should not be six seconds, obviously. The clock never started. And they, they, something went wrong there with the clock because there were two dribbles taken and the clock never started. That's what Don Haskins is going to tell him. He's going to make sure he stays in the coaching box. So you don't want to pick up a technical. Now, just stay within the coaching box and kind of yell to him. Now, the official will not come over to him. He's got to motion him over. The official say, no, that's OK. I'll just stay in the middle of the court. The foul there was on Sean Elliott. That is his fifth. And Sean Elliott fouls out after a superb effort. 26 points for Elliott. He had 17 in the second half, two in the overtime. 
Of course, we must also remember that they can use instant replay this year in the tournament to correct clock malfunctions. That's a byproduct of the Kansas-Michigan State game a year ago, but apparently they're not going to do that here. Well, only two seconds elapsed, and you would have thought to be more than that. Doesn't seem to matter because Blocker's going to go ahead and put the free throw down with a 97-91 lead. It's uh, you know improbable and impossible for Arizona to come back right now. Well, those people were very close to going home. But now the Miners going to keep their hotel rooms and stay in Tucson to play the Iowa Hawkeyes on Sunday. That's one thing about NCAA tournament games. You never know. You can remember back when NC State won it. Same thing happened. They won a lot of close games. And the NCAA champion, Ted, has come out of the West the last three years. So you got Louisville last year, then Georgetown, then NC State, and they all came out of the West. And the West is loaded again. So a lot of good teams are going to be moving up. And the Miners will pick up a win that was almost snatched away from them, but an impressive overtime performance by UTEP. Uh, you see the jubilation, and Don Haskins pulling one out that he, he probably doubted he could in the final seconds. 